गुड डे टू ऑल ऑफ यू कंप्यूटर शिक्षा इज सपोर्टेड बाय डू यू रिमेंबर वॉट ऑल यू हैड लर्न इन द प्रीवियस क्लास यू हैड लर्न अबाउट द ऑप्शन ऑफ द स्टैंडर्ड टूल बार एंड हैड ऑल्सो लर्न अबाउट सम फॉर्मूलाज सो लेट एस रिवाइज सम ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट यू हैड लर्न बिफोर वी बिगिन टूडेज क्लास विच ऑल ऑप्शन can you keep in the standard toolbar you can keep the options of the mino bar that you need to use the most in the standard toolbar can you tell what is the maximum number of rows or columns in a spreadsheet and also what is the maximum number of sheets that you can have the maximum number of rows that you can have in a spreadsheet is 1048576 or 10,48,576. The maximum number of columns you can have in a spreadsheet are 1024, 1024. And you can have a maximum of 256 sheets in your spreadsheet this can vary with the version of the software do you know what you will need to do if you want to change the name of your sheet for changing the sheet name you will go to the sheet option sub menu of the format tool and then you will change the name by using the rename option or else you can go to the sheet option which is just above the status bar here you need to double click or right click and then use the rename option if you need to change the place of your sheet then how will you do it you can move your sheet in two ways right click on the sheet that you want to move and then select the move sheet option or go to the sheet sub menu of the edit menu in the menu bar and then select the move or copy option with which you will be able to move your sheet if you want to keep your data in a to z order what will you do for this you will use the sort ascending option but before doing this you will need to select your entire data which you need to place in a a to z order can you tell how to find lowest common multiple value from the given number that is 4 6 and 10 in spreadsheet with the help of the lcm formula we find the lowest common multiple value when we calculate the lcm for all these three numbers then the answer will be 60 in a spreadsheet how can you apply the dollar rupee or other currency symbols before your numbers if you want to show in any column or row the percentage sign or dollar sign or the decimal etc then you will need to select the number format option from the standard toolbar do you know why is the gcd option used with the help of the gcd formula you can find the greatest common factor value if you have a set of numbers and you want to find the common number by which all these can be divided then you will use the gcd formula now all of you switch on your computer and open the spreadsheet file in today's class you will learn about the remaining options of the file menu and edit menu like send property digital signature templates paste special sheet delete manual break etc besides this 
you will also learn more about some formulas. Now all of you type some data in your spreadsheet. Let us now learn about the send option and get to know what happens with the send option. Can you tell why is the send option used? With the send option, you can send your spreadsheet file to another user. However, to be able to use the send option, you need to have an Outlook account. Without such an account, you will not be able to send any document to another user. Let us watch this video and see how a document is sent. Let us now watch this video and see how we can send our document as email. We will learn about the options of the send option. We have to go to the file menu in the menu bar. Click there. Click the send option. You can see there are options for document as email, email as open document spreadsheet, email as Microsoft Excel, email as PDF. So we select document as email. And since this system is connected to the net and there is an Outlook account, an Outlook page opens. You can type in the address of the person to whom you are sending this document. So in the to column, type the user's email ID. You can type a subject. You can see that the document is already mentioned in the attachment. Then you click on send and it will get sent to that particular user. Remember that you should have an Outlook account and the system should be connected. Your system should be connected. Since we don't want to send it right now, we will just close this and carry on with our class. Let us now learn about the properties option of the file menu. Do you know what happens with the properties option? With the properties option, you can get information about your spreadsheet file, like when you had last saved the file, details about the text document, like how many page numbers are there, how many words are there, how many paragraphs are there, what is the size of the file, etc. Since there are many options of the properties like general, description, security, statistics, etc. Let us now see in this video how these are used. With the help of this video, let us now learn about the various options of the properties. So to go to properties, take a cursor to the file menu, click there and click on properties. A box opens and by default it opens in on the general tab. The general tab shows you that this file has been saved or not. Since it says untitled, it means that this file has not yet been saved. Then it shows you what type of a file it is. It is a spreadsheet file. The location is shown as unknown because uh, right now this is not saved. Then there is created on, when was this created, when was it modified, so on. Then if you go to description, you can give a description for the file that you have created. You can create a title, you can create some comments about this. You can even have some custom properties. Go to internet option. So you can either select do not refresh automatically or you can select refresh this document and then give a time after how many seconds you want this document to be refreshed. And redirect from this document is in relation to any files which are linked with this through hyperlink. So when we go to security, it shows you a message because 
we should have selected do not refresh automatically. Then we go to security to see the options. Here you can either show that this file should be opened only as read only. So you can only read from the file if this is tick marked. And if you click on record changes, it means that if anyone makes any changes on this file, you will be able to see those changes that have been made. So we can we can tick mark and select these options if we want. If, if we want to show the changes being made, we will click tick on record changes. You can just click on yes here. Then the next option is statistics. Statistics is about the file. How many sheets are there? How many cells have been used? How many number of pages are there? All this kind of statistics is available. So by using the properties option, you can get a lot of information about your file. And you can also protect your file. This is how you will use the properties option. Let us next learn about templates. Do you know what happens with templates? With the template option, you can make templates which you can use in the future whenever these are needed. You can paste the template in your document. Let us watch this video and learn more about the use of templates. Let us now watch this video and learn how we use the template option. So if you have some data and you want to save this as a template, so that you can reuse it in future, you will have to make a template first. So to use the template option, we take our cursor or pointer to the file menu, click on that and then click on templates. In the templates, we first have to save this data. So we will click on the save option from here. As is being shown in the video, a box opens and you can type a new template name for the data that you are saving as a template. So we're typing CALS, CALC123, click on OK. So your template has now been saved. Now to use it or to export it and to use the same template again, we will once again go to the file menu, click there, come to templates and this time, we will click on the organize option. When we click on the organize option, it shows you a box. Your template is in the my templates folder. So click there, look for your file, look for your template. You can scroll up and down and you can see that calc123 file exists here. Select that and then go to the drop down button near commands button. Click there. You can, if you want to edit this template, you can do that. If you want to import, export, since you want to export, we will click on export template. Then it shows you a location where you want to have this template. So we can select, let's say, desktop, and you can give a file name. We've given calc123, and we click on save so that this template is now available to you in the desktop and you can use this in any of your calci sheets or otherwise from the desktop by doing copy paste also so you can if you want to see where the template set has been saved you can minimize this file which you were working on go to the desktop and you can see that calci123 exists there as a template when you bring your cursor here it shows you that it is a template, open document, spreadsheet template. So you can use this to create similar data. When you click here, you can see what is happening. And you can reuse this by using copy, paste and other options. So this is how you will be using the template option.
let us now learn about the preview in web browser. Can you tell why do we use the preview in web browser option? With the preview in web browser option, you can view all your spreadsheet sheets in the browser. We will now watch this video to understand how the preview in web browser option is used. With the help of this video, let us now learn how we use the preview in web browser option. So, to see our data in a web page or on an internet page, we can go to the preview in web browser option. So, we take our cursor or pointer to the file menu, click there and then click on preview in web browser. So, as soon as you click here, the web browser page opens. It takes some time to open the web browser page and your data that you had created appears in the web browser as a web browser page. So, by doing this, you can see all the data that you had created on your Calci file as a web as data in a web browser page. So, this is how you can use the preview in web browser option to see your data from your Calci sheet on a web browser. You can go back to your own file, the file that you were working on by clicking on the taskbar as is being shown in the video. Next, all of you will get to learn about all the date and time related formulas. This means that you will be taught in this class about all the formulas related to date and time, just like you learned about date, time and month formulas in the last class. So now you will be learning about formulas like weekday is leap year, days in month, week in year, etc. You will use the weekday formula when you want to know the week for a given year, month and date and want to find out the week in which the date fell. This is easily found by the weekday formula. The way you use this formula is equal to weekday bracket 07 12 2016. Let us watch this video and see how this formula is used. Watch this video and learn how we use the weekday formula. So, the weekday formula gives us the weekdays from a date that we provide. So, first we are typing under the date title, some dates we are typing. So, the first date we have typed as 28th February 2017. We type another date, 12th 2 2017. And we type another third date also. Six two two thousand seventeen. Now, if we want to apply the weekday formula for this first date, twenty eight two two thousand seventeen, we bring a cursor to the cell where we want to apply the formula, just below the title weekday, and we can apply this for all the dates and see what answer we get. So, we bring our cursor here in the cell and then type the formula for weekday, which will be equal to weekday, W E E K D A Y, begin the bracket and then you can either select the date from the date column or you can type the date again. So, we are typing 28 2 2017. Close the bracket 
and then before closing the bracket you have to type a semicolon and give a type if you give one as type it will count from sunday if you give zero as type it will count from monday then close the bracket and press enter so it gives you an answer of 4 for the date 28 to 2017 similarly if we want for 12 to 17 we will again type equal to weekday begin the bracket and then either type the date or select the date twelve dash zero two or two dash twenty seventeen then put a semicolon and type one to begin from Sunday close the bracket and press enter and you will get an answer of two so it shows two weeks and then again for the last date which is 6 February 2017 once again, we apply the formula equal to weekday begin the bracket and then we can either select the date or type in the date. So 6 2 2017 semicolon and the type again we are keeping 1 to count from Sunday and close the bracket and it gives you an answer as soon as you press enter for weekday so you get three here so this is how you will use the weekday formula to apply that on any date on your calci sheet do you know why we use the is leap year formula with the help of the is leap year formula we can find out which year is a leap year and also which year is not a leap year a leap year comes after every four years and has 366 days for example 2016 is a leap year and after this date, the next leap year is 2020. The years in between 2017, 2018 and 2019 are not leap years. You will make use of this formula as equal to is leap year bracket open 12-02-2016 bracket close. Let us watch this video and see how this formula is used. Let us watch this video and now see how the is leap year formula is used to find out whether uh, an year in a particular date is a leap year or not. So for this we will first key in some dates in our Calci sheet. So in the G1 cell, we are writing the title as date because this is where we will key in the dates. And we are going to use the date formula itself to key in the dates so that there is no problem when we are using the is leap year formula. So we are using the date formula is equal to date bracket open, then the year semicolon, the month semicolon the day and close the bracket when you press enter the date gets entered here we are also entering the second date is equal to date 2016 semicolon 3 semicolon 20 as the day and bracket close press enter let's enter two more dates so is equal to date the second date that we have entered is for the year 2016, which as you all know is a leap year. So is equal to date 2019. Then the fourth date 
is equal to date bracket open then the year first this time we are typing 2020 semicolon year semicolon day month and then semicolon date now in h1 cell let's type the title as leap year because this is where in the h column we will use the is leap year formula so we come to h2 cell and let's apply the leap year formula which will be written as is equal to is leap year is L E A P Y E A R, then bracket open, and then you select the date with, in which you want to find the leap year, close the bracket, press enter, and you will see it gives you an answer of zero, which means that this year, 2014, is not a leap year. Now, if you want to apply the formula to the rest of the other three rows, we just Select this where we have applied the formula and drag the black dot downwards and you can see that 2016 shows 1 and 2020 shows 1 which means that these two are leap years. The rest are zeros which means that they are not leap years. So this is how you will apply the is leap year formula. You will use the days in month formula to find the days of a particular month and want to find out how many days are there in a specific one month. The formula to be used for this is equal to days in month bracket open 12-1-2016 bracket close. Let us now watch this video and see how the formula is used. By watching this video, we are going to see how we use the formula for days in month. So for using this, in the I1 cell, we are typing the title days count. Then we use the formula and select the date from which we want to know how many days are there in that particular month in the date. So this way we will know the days count of the month in a selected date. We have already typed out number of dates here. So we now apply the formula equal to days in month, then bracket open and then select the date from which you want to find the number of days in that month. So we've selected this date. Notice that it's a month of February. Close the bracket and press enter. And you see that it shows the number of days in that month as 28 because it's a month of February. Now, if you want to apply the formula again in the other rows also, you can type equal to days in month, then select, open the bracket, select the date, close the bracket, press enter. And this time it's the month of March, the third month. So it shows 31 days. If you want to apply the formula in the other rows, you can just drag this black dot here as is being shown in the video. And you get the days in the month of the other dates which you select in that row. So this is how you will apply the formula for days in month. The next formula is weeks in year, using which you can get to know how many weeks are there in a specified year. To use this formula, you will use equal to weeks in year, bracket open, 12-12-2014 bracket close. See the use of this formula in the video being shown. With the help of this video, we will now learn how we can use the formula for finding the 
weeks in a year. So from any date, if you want to find the number of weeks that are in that particular year in the date, you will use this formula. So to use this, let's first type the title in the J1 column. So we, since we are doing a weeks count, we can type the title here in J1 as week count. And then in the next cell, which is J2, we'll apply the formula, which is equal to weeks in year. Remember that you have to type the correct spelling for any formula. So here, if you have typed week in year as you can see in the video, it will not give you the correct formula. It should be weeks in year. And then begin bracket, then select the date from which you want to find the number of weeks in that particular year in the date. Close the bracket and then press enter. So as, as soon as you press enter, you will find that in the year 2014, it shows 52 weeks. If you drag this black dot down, the same formula will get applied to all the other rows and you can see the number of weeks in each of the years in the dates in those rows. So this is how you will apply the weeks in a year formula. The next formula is for days. Days formula is used to find out the number of days between two dates. For example, if you want to know how many days are there between 12th and 25th, then you will use this formula. The use of this formula will be equal to days bracket open date 1 semicolon date 2 bracket close. Let us watch the video and see how we get the number of days. Let us now watch this video and learn how we can use the days formula to find out the number of days between two dates. So we first in the K1 cell, we are typing day count or days count because we are going to count the number of days in between two dates. So for this, we have to select two dates between which we want the number of days to be counted. So let's assume that the 2016 date and 2014 date, we want to find the days. So we'll type the formula equal to days, bracket open, then first select the date 2. So we select 20th March 2016 date as date 2, then put a semicolon and then select the date 1, which is 20th February 2014. So we select that date, close the bracket and press enter. And you find that the number of days between these two dates is 759. So this is how the days formula can be used. Let us apply it to another set of dates, 1st of February 2020 and 2nd of March 2019. So we want to apply this formula now. So we use equal to days, bracket open, select date 2. So we select the 1st February 2020 as date 2, semicolon, and then select the first date or date 1, which is 2nd March 2019. Close the bracket, press enter. And you will see that the number of days between these two dates is 336. This is how you will apply the days formula. Next is the formula for days 360. Bracket open, bracket close. This will tell you how many years have gone by. For example, if you want to know how many years were there between 2000, 01, 01 to 2017, 01, 
zero one, then you will use the days three sixty formula. Let us now watch the video and see how days three sixty bracket open bracket close formula is applied. Let us watch this video now and understand how we can use the days 360 formula on our calci sheet this formula helps us to find the number of years between two given years so let's first type in the l1 cell the title year count because we are going to use the days 360 formula in the l column Let's also type two years, the difference of which we want to find out. So we are typing 1857 and 2017 in two separate cells. Now, if we want to find the difference between these two years, how many years are there in between? We will use the days 360 formula. So let's go to L2 cell as is being shown in the video. And let's type out the formula which is equal to days 360. Remember, you should type it correctly days 360. Begin bracket, then select the first one of the years, put a semicolon, and select the second year, and bracket close, and press enter. And you can see it shows you the difference of 159. Doesn't matter even if it is a negative, it is just showing you the difference between the two years. 159. You could have applied this formula on a given date, which has day, month, and year. In that case, the correct answer would not have come. So, for instance, we are showing you here in the video, we are typing is equal to days and we are calculating the days, days between 1857 and 2017 and it is giving us 160 because it is also including both the years here. Now, let us see what happens if we use the days formula to see the difference between two dates. In this case, we will type is equal to days is equal to year or since we are going to use the days formula, let us use that. Is equal to days bracket open and then we have to select the first date. So, we have selected We are using days 360 formula again. Bracket open. And then the first date, which is 0102 of 2020. Then a semicolon and the second date. Close the bracket and press enter. It gives you an erroneous message. It gives you, there should have been a difference of something like 3. 65 days, but it's showing you something else. So let's try out a different formula is equal to days bracket open and then we first extract the year from a given date. So we type year bracket open and then select the date bracket close. So this will give us the year which is 2020 in the selected date. Then a semicolon. One more time, we extract the year from the second date also. So we type year, bracket open, and this time we select the second year, which is 2019, and bracket close. And then we have to put another bracket to close that first bracket, and then press enter, and you will see it shows you the difference as one year. So this is how you can apply the days 360 formula on years. And if you have to apply it on dates, you have to use this method 
wherein you first extract the year from a given date and then find out the difference between the years. Let us now learn about the remaining options of the edit menu. These are paste special, sheet and delete manual break. Let us first learn about paste special. Can you tell why we use the paste special option? Paste special is a very important one since it contains those options like formula, text, number and other such tools which are used very importantly in spreadsheets. We will watch the video to see how all these options are used. Let us now watch this video and see how we use the paste special option in the edit menu. So to paste special, it means that you can copy something from your given data. We are copying the G column, which is the date column. We just use the edit menu and click on copy to copy this, bring our cursor here and then click on edit. Now when you click on paste special, this box opens, paste all has been selected. If you click on OK, everything that you had copied gets pasted. Bring your cursor to the C column and then let's once again use paste special with a different selection. Go to edit, click on paste special box. Now remove paste all and select the things that you want. So this time we have unselected text. So the text which is D-A-T-E is not coming. Only the dates are coming. Similarly, you can use various options. Let's go to D column. Use paste special again from the edit menu. And this time we are unselecting date and time. So we are only clicking on OK now and you see only the dates are coming. No other text or uh, date and time formulas are being applied. Going to the next column, we are again using paste special. This time we have removed formula also, but we have selected numbers. So when we, when we click on OK here, you will see that only the numbers appear there. And everything else is not shown. No text, no formula. So when you click on paste special, you have various options. You can either select paste all or select any of the num numbers, date and time formulas that you want. So this time we had selected text. So the date, only the date D-A-T-E is written and nothing else is being copied here. Again, when we do paste special here, so we can use any of these that options that we have to get the formulas, to get, get the numbers, to get the text or you can use paste all selection and when you click on OK, whatever options you have applied will get, get pasted. So this is how you can use the paste special option. Next is the option for Compare document. Can you tell why compare document is used? Using compare document, you can compare your current document with another document. Suppose you have a document which you have saved and then you have another new document. Then you can compare your new document with the saved document and after doing this, Whatever you write in your new document will appear in red. Let us now watch the video and understand how the compare document is used to compare documents. Let us watch this video and see how we can use the compare document option. So when you use the compare document option, it goes into change mode or record mode, which means that any changes or any editing that is being done on the document gets recorded or gets shown in a highlighted color. So 
when we compare it with our original document, we will get to know what are the changes. So we click on edit and click on compare document. It a box opens and you can click on the document that you want to use. So we click on class one, click on open and it opens the document that you have seen earlier and you can see that there are some changes have been made in this document earlier. So it shows you on each cell the document, the changes that have been made. You can accept these changes or reject these changes. If you go to the other sheet, sheet 2, which we were working on, it again shows you all the editing or all the entries that have been made here. Again, you can accept or reject. If you type something in this, it again gets highlighted with this red margin. We are typing some text. So it shows that there is some change being made. We are removing the text date. It again is getting highlighted. So all these changes are being marked here. So this is how you will use the change document to see all the changes that have been made on your document. You can see in the sheet that you had opened and you can see on the sheet that we were working on. If you don't want to see the changes, you want to bring it into normal, go to edit, go to changes and remove the record selection. It asks you that this action will change the recording mode. So when you say OK, it brings back these two sheets that we were working on in the normal view. So no longer the changes are being recorded here. So this is how you can use the compare document option. The next option is of sheet. Using the sheet option, you can copy or move your sheet. You can select the sheet, record or remove macros, etc. Let us watch the video and see how the sheet option is used. Let us now watch this video and know about the various options of the sheet option. So if you go to the edit menu and click on sheet option, a box opens where you have options for move or copy, select, delete, events. So if we click on move or copy sheet, it gives you an option of moving the current document or the current sheet to the document and then you can have, you can insert it before or after various sheets which are available to you or you can copy this also. So you can use this move or copy sheet to insert before sheet 1, sheet 2, sheet 3. However, we first need to select one of the sheets that we want to move or copy. So we will close this. Once again, go to edit menu, go to sheet and then click on select option. So we select one of the sheets, for instance, select, select sheet one. So it takes us directly to the sheet one. Now we go again to edit option, click on sheet click on move copy option, the box opens and now you can move this sheet, the sheet 1 to wherever you want. If you want to move it to the end position, you will click on the option saying move to end position and click on OK. So you will see sheet 1 gets moved to the end or it gets moved to the position which is after sheet 3. As you can see here, sheet 2, sheet 3 and then sheet 1 has been moved to the last position. Sheet 3 is blank. We come back to sheet 2, go to edit. Once again, go to sheet 1 and if we don't want this, we can delete this. We go to edit, go to sheet option and then we can select the delete option here. If you are sure, you can click on yes. So this sheet gets deleted. Now we have sheet 2 and sheet 3. 
we are getting some errors we just click on ok we have now sheet 2 and sheet 1 if you go to edit again go to sheet this time we are selecting the events option so you can see here you can activate option deactivate document double click right click this is to add macros so if there are some macros you can use those right click is also for macros here as we are seeing macro selector you can you were seeing some boxes in between some messages if you want to remove that you can select that macro name and then you can click on ok so you can add macros delete macros move sheets from its present position we are if you want to remove some macro we are doing that right now click on ok so this is how you're going to use the sheet option once again we go to edit go to sheet we have selected move and copy and when we select move to the end position you've already seen what happens this time we have selected a copy so a copy of sheet 2 has appeared for you so this has made another copy of the sheet that you were working on and you can use this to do your work so this is how you will be using this if you don't want to save any changes you can discard that so you have sheet one now if you want to insert some sheets or if you want to bring back by just you can do undo and you will get back the sheets that you had deleted so we brought back both our sheets the blank sheet sheet one sheet two as you can see so this way you can use the sheet option for doing various actions on your Calci sheet. The next option is for delete manual break. Can you tell why is the delete manual break used? With the use of delete manual break, you can delete any rows or columns that you have broken. Let us watch the video and see how we use the delete manual break. Let us now watch this video and see how we use the delete manual break option. Obviously, if you have to delete a manual break, it, the manual break should have been inserted already. So, in our spreadsheet, we first, let's insert a manual break. So, we go to the insert menu, click on manual break and click on row break let's first insert a row break so as you can see a line is appearing below the 10th row now if we go to page preview we can see that this manual break has indeed been inserted we need to place our cursor properly and then go to edit go to delete manual break But you will see that the options are not getting highlighted. This is because our selection is not right. We have not kept the cursor in the starting position. So if we, even if we select it like this, as is being shown in the video, the delete manual break still does not highlight any of the options available. Since this is a row break, we need to select the first of portion of the first cell of the row break like as is being shown in the video now go to delete manual break and you can see the row break option is highlighted click on that and you can see that the row break gets deleted by doing this now let's also show how we can insert a manual break in the column so we insert on column break we've got a column break here as you can see and if we want to delete this, we will again need to place our cursor properly. Go to edit, go to delete manual break. You can see the options are not getting highlighted because the cursor is not properly placed. 
so we place it here now try again but it is still not highlighted so what you have to do is keep your cursor here on c1 cell go to delete manual break now and the column break option is highlighted so you can select that and the column break which was inserted earlier gets removed so this is how you can use the delete manual break option if you have already inserted a manual break either on the rows or on the columns and use the delete manual break option since today's class ends here all of you close your file and properly shut down your computers in today's class you learned about some of the options for send templates paste special and then you learned about some formulas like days weekday is leap year days 360 days in month etc computer shiksha is supported by thank you